for an artist who has never used bands in town, maybe they've heard of it or because of the pandemic, maybe they started their career during the pandemic and haven't even been touring. What, what is like the elevator pitch of like what bands in town does for them? Well, there is a, because we serve 70 million people, we, we learn their music preference. And for each fan, we create a music graph, what we call a music DNA that describes its music preferences. So we not only alert the fans on when their favorite artists go on tour and come to their town, but we also, and most importantly, recommend shows to fans. And you may not know that, but 50% of the people that are buying tickets or that are discovering shows through bands in town are actually clicking buy tickets for shows of artists of less than 200,000 followers. So which means that what really works with Benz in Town is our recommendation engine. So the, the reason why an artist should establish a player's presence, claim its page, open an account, and we have half a million artists who did that, 90% of the top 4,000 touring artists in America, and it's pretty much 70% of all artists on tour in the world, is because they realize very quickly that we help sell more tickets. We help create engagement with the fans. And that, that really is palatable. Sometimes artists realize it. Sometimes we do it without necessarily being discovered. But it's not uncommon that bands in town represent 10 to 20% of all tickets sold in, in venues that gather between 500 to 3,000 cap type of, of fans. So it's a very important step. And the earlier actually artists take that step, and create an account and list their shows and start interacting with their fans, the better the algorithm will recognize them and recommend them through all the emails, push notification. This month, only in June, we send 170 million emails and push notifications to our fans. All emails were different for each fan. So each recommendation is specifically tailored to the taste of the fans. But there's a trick. We reserve and we trick the algorithm to recommend developing an emerging artist along the recommendation we make or the alerts we make, obviously, for the larger artists that the fans may already know. Yeah, I was shocked to find out that my band had over 4,000 followers on bands in town and, and you have tools there where I can actually message them about the shows that we're, we're doing. And I just brought up the dashboard and saw that I have ticket clicks too from bands in town from that promotion. And it was one of those things, especially coming out of the pandemic where I'm like, I need to re-engage with this. And so, yeah, for artists, if you haven't created an account, you might have more followers on there. And, and obviously people are discovering us from the site. Yeah. So in general, we bring new fans to the artist. For the biggest to the smallest, 85% of the fans you may have on bands in town may not be your usual followers. We bring the core fans, the core concert goers to the, to the artist. And indeed, as you logged in, you saw that you could not only list your shows and get them distributed and surfaced, not only on the bands in town ecosystem, but also on Shazam and Microsoft, Amazon Alexa, I mean, there are different uh, distribution mechanisms that we use to surface the, the tour dates of the artist. But also you can indeed engage with the fans. So we provide free tools to build this audience. So yes, you, we bring you an audience through the recommendations, but we also give you tools to capture and build that audience. Typically, we believe that there is no sustainable future for an artist if it, if it doesn't own its own first party data. So mm -hmm. we provide widgets, APIs that enable the artists to display their toilets on their websites, to post toilets on their socials or without any effort. Frankly, it's already provided. It's very easy to install. But by doing so, when fans interact with such widgets, uh, they also and register to bands in town, but they also register to the artist list. And we share that with the artist. You can message the fans through the Benz in Town platform using the, you know, the voice of Benz in Town directly. And the emails goes directly to the inbox of the fans. It also creates push notifications to the phones. But you can also 
export these emails to your existing mailing systems. So literally download them because the fans, if the fans and when the fans give you, give us the authorizations to let you do so. And lastly, you may have seen that we created a free emailing platform that you can use to not only message your follower on Benzin Town, but also upload your, your own emails and start doing campaigns for free. So we expanded the platform into some sort of a CRM platform that lets the artist fully engage with the audience we had them create and build. Yeah, there's, there's so many tools in here that are really great. And I love the idea that you pointed out because I think it's an increasing problem for artists building up other platforms and then not having any access to the data of their fans, especially things like Facebook and, you know, mm -hmm. TikTok, it's like at the end of the day, you're you're doing all the work for them. Even if you're having some success on the platform, you still don't own that relationship with the fan. So I think yeah, that's and really it's worse than that. They ask you to pay. Yeah, After exactly. You reach exactly. Them to boost. We give you 100 access with no filter and at no cost. So again, the, we are artists first and try to contribute value to the artist. We extract value from the rest of the ecosystem, and we can talk about business model later. But for the artist, all of this is free, regardless, by the way, of the size of the artist, whether you're, whether you're really small or whether you're really big. And believe me, everybody uses Benzintown.